What am I doing guys? I am sitting here practicing the opening for Cold Motor by Bob Log Third. Sounds just like it, huh? Well, give you a listen right up there. There's a link to it right up there right now. You judge for that yourself. Anyway, I'm about ready to take the strings off of this. We did an episode, uh, the last couple of episodes have been about this guitar. It is the Archcraft from the 30s. We fixed some curfing. We did the hole back there with the Victrola cookie tin. And now we are going to fix a crack that is on the body right here where it got dropped, which created the hole, which created the leg bone attached to the neck bone. Anyway, ultimately we are going to replace the binding here which is self-destructing and that's kind of what we're working up to so you remember me telling you that there were some things in these repairs where you want to leave the tension on by having the strings uh, on and tuned now we're going to get into where we want to take the strings and loosen them off and fix cracks and do all that kind of stuff so just in case I totally dropped a ball and ruined this thing. This was the last you heard of it, so make sure you record that and save it because when you're on Antiques Roadshow, yeah, you'll know then. So, hey, some of you are asking, why are you making these movies about arch tops? Well, um, use your head. I've done more than 200 episodes about cigar box guitars and coffee can guitars and stuff, and no offense, guys, but... You know, after your 16th video on how to play Smoke on the Water in Open G, yeah, there's not a lot left to do. So I'll leave that up to the other 2,000 people who are doing the exact same thing that we're all trying to do. Anyway, I am working on guitars. The one I'm working on is right there right now. It's going to go off to Europe. Um, and so I haven't given up. If you ever see me sitting outside with my guitars, you you and your wallet will definitely know that I'm still building these things. So, anyway, I want to give a shout out today to, let's get this out of the way before I drop it and smash it even worse, and then we can do another 300 episodes about how to fix one guitar. Anyway, I want to give a shout out today to Sheffield, England. What's in Sheffield, England? Well, these clamps, uh, Sheffield clamps, good stuff, and then, of course, Def Leppard. Now, I need to admonish you that Def Leppard is Def Leppard if Pete Willis is on the guitar. Once Pete Willis disappears, yeah, I don't know. Check in with the fan girls and tell me about Def Leppard then. But we're going to put this away. This is a good one. I've given this one a shout out before. Def Leppard, high and dry. You can't beat that. Once Mutt Lang came into the picture, I don't know what happened. Uh, Shania Twain, that's what happened at least for a little bit. Anyway, this clamp right here, we might need a clamp for this guitar repair. Uh, problem is, is this clamp might make the repair worse than the repair we're trying to make. And so, this is one of those episodes where we're going to do something really simple, like fix a crack, but we're going to make something, and some of my best episodes have been, or people find them uh, most interesting and useful, are ones like how to build templates and uh, maybe the coffee can template or the scarf joint template. I will make a playlist of the template uh, episodes I've done, and you'll get a link to it right up there. So anyway, we're going to make a clamp or several. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And now we're going to fix the crack in the body of this guitar. So in order to do that, we need to get to the bench. Let's go. All right, quick look at the bench. This license plate guitar is going to ship off to Europe in the next couple of days. And um, it's going to repeat somebody over there. And I'm sure you'll see it showing up. We're getting the holes ready for the pickup. And um, the bridge is over there. And I like this... Um, sunburst we got going on here but anyway there's some more work to do here let's set that one off to the side for a second oh and before i forget 
matchbook of the episode. Let's take a look at this one. People complain about California a lot, a lot of red tape and stuff, but you know, there are some good things about California, especially if you go back a ways like November 1936. For those of you that don't like long games, especially board games, they have the Anti-Monopoly League of California. Got to be a good thing because, yup, there's Honest Abe. Matchbook of the episode, the Anti-Monopoly League of California Incorporated. Now, before I forget, I told you the last time that we made this repair with the guitar under tension, meaning that the strings were uh, on it and, and it was tuned and you could play it uh, because I didn't want to slack everything off. And then once we started putting these screws in, then tighten it up and have the body stretch out and start pit, um, wallering out these screw holes already. But this time, when it comes to fixing this split right there, we are going to want to relax the strings. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now we'll turn the tuners uh, off a couple of rounds, say two or three, where everything's nice and loose. I don't want the bridge falling off or anything like that, but we'll just slack these tuners off a little bit. All right, there we go. They're nice and loose, but nothing is going to slip around. We are actually going to do an episode about bridges and what happens when you put a bridge on and it's not sitting right or it hasn't been fit to the guitar and what that means to an arch top and sooner or later you end up with a cracked top. Anyway, um, what I want to show you here is that this is an arch top, meaning that if you look, let's get the camera right here. This part is nice and flat right here, but the further you get from the edge, the more it comes up, and that gives the body more sound, uh, a bigger sound cavity is why they do that. And so the first couple of inches here, or let's do this properly so we know, before it starts rising up is about 30 millimeters or say an inch and a half. It's nice and flat right in here. I don't like getting near the F holes. Oh, something I want to point out here, if I got my pointer, is some F holes are tied together, like so. Some of them are split. Um, you want to be really careful working around the F holes, especially if they're like this, because it's pretty easy to make that pop. It's my experience that these uh, ones with the F holes that have the comma shape that's separate from the F is they're kind of more desirable. That's just a generalization that I've noticed. But anyway, yeah, be careful. But this part is right here is flat. If you start clamping up into here, ooh, there's going to be a problem. Okay, so let's talk about this crack here. Again, the strings are loosened off, and we're going to flip this over where the crack in the side is. And, um, it's always handy to have a couple of extra towels around so you can brace this up. Arch tops, they like to slip around and stuff. But anyway, okay, so the crack we're talking about is again right there. It runs all the way over here. So we're going to have to clamp this uh, from about here over into here. Now, we know that we have a ton of these. We all have a ton of these. We want a ton of these, and they're tough. I mean, you can crank down. They're even, look, they're square, so you could put a, a wrench or something on it to tighten stuff down if you wanted to. These are heavy duty, and we typically use them to clamp uh, heel boards to neck boards, put our fret boards on. We can even straighten out our frets if we need to by putting one of these on here and then clamping this down with a couple of these heavy duty clamps but here's the problem we can focus everything here I always put a little tape on here and the easy thing to do is just put that there and we start cracking this down well guess what all of the focus is right there we know that some of that curving that was back in here we had to fix it this is an old guitar it's almost 90 years old so we don't know what's under there and we start clamping this down like this or uh, maybe we put a another board on there or something and clamp across it or whatever when you start making a combination of 
this being flat, this stuff being warped, this being an old guitar, this rising on here. This is not the best option. Now, Luthers have these things called spool clamps, and what they do is, what do you know, they have spools. And you basically can adjust them, like so, and they're padded there, like this, and you simply do this. I should adjust this a little bit better, but there you go. And it's clamping right to near the edge where it's nice and flat, and you can feel that it's not some big heavy metal thing. You can feel when it's starting to get tight. So, where do you get these? Right here, we're going to make some. Let's that's what this is about. We're going to make some spool clamps right now. Okay, let's do our parts list. First thing we're going to need is some all thread. Um, I've got 7 sixteenths here. I um, get this at the hardware store. I bought it in six foot length so I could do several of these clamps. I got these spools. They look like what used to have thread on them. I will give you a link to these below where you get about 10 of these okay then we need some cork sheeting cork comes in sheets with adhesive on the back um, you can use this in your tool drawers you could use it in the kitchen it naturally resists um, a mildew and stuff the latin that on the tree this comes from is quercus suber quercus suber watch for that one on jeopardy now you're going to need some hardware that fits whatever your all thread size is, including two wing nuts, you know, just regular wing nuts, not the people that you know in your town that you call the same thing, two nylon insert nuts, sometimes they call these aviation nuts because they've got that on there and it doesn't want to come off, you want two of those. You want four fender washers, again, that go with the size all thread. You want rubber washers, four of those. You want a thread protector that fits over the end of the all thread, like so. And I'll show you what that's for. It just slips on there like so. You want to get ahead of yourself here by making sure that you drill out the center hole in your spool to match the size of your all thread and by setting the spool down and tracing out the shape of it on the bottom of the this is the paper that protects the adhesive so you want to um, draw those out and be ready to cut those out okay I'm gonna keep you out of trouble here let's say you got a six foot piece of all thread and you want to cut it where you end up with six clamps that are about a foot long. All thread is about a foot long. That should take care of any body, regardless of how thick or thin it is. Um, clamping across the body is something else, and we'll talk about that in another episode. But let's say that I mark this out, and I've got a mark right there. And I might have a band saw. I might have a, a, a hack saw. I might have a bolt cutters or whatever. But I'll, I'm going to tell you what. Whatever you use is going to booger up the threads. That means you're going to try to put a wing nut on it or a bolt and it's not going to go on. So what you do is you put two nuts on either side of where your cut is going to be. That way, when you make the cut, you can take these nuts and move them and run them over the cut and it will self-repair the threads. So let's say that this is where I made my cut and I'm having a problem getting it off. I can run this up here and when it starts to give me a problem, I can put uh, wrenches on this one, tighten these up and then hold these and force this one off and by it coming off, it will fix the threads automatically. So you don't want to get in a position where you just cut it and then you're having to go all the way to the six foot end of this just to put 
a knot on to try and fix it. So save yourself some time and do that before you start. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is take a wing knot. I'm going to put it on this way with the wings facing out towards the end. And I'm going to run this up by spinning it a little bit. Those threads are still a little boogered up. I'm going to get a couple inches up here like so. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take one of these aviation or nylon insert nuts and I'm going to put it on the end. And I've already done this and this was kind of a pain. I had to double nut the other end of it and hang on to this with a wrench while I put this one on. But I want to put that on where it's just flush there. I don't want that sticking out because I don't want threads sticking out where if I drop something it's going to uh, mar up and put marks on things. But we're going to put that on again. Notice this is freely spinning and this is on here tight. Okay, now I'm going to take my spool. I'm going to take my drill bit. It's the same, a little bit bigger than all thread. And I'm going to drill through. Isn't this exciting? There we go. All right, now I'm going to take my cork with the adhesive. I'm going to take my Chick Flick Teal scissors. And I'm going to cut around like this. Eni Crafty. I'm going to peel this paper back. I'm going to ruin my manicure. I'm going to put this on here like so. Then I'm going to take my scissors and very carefully find the hole like so. And I'm going to go that way and that way. Now this part's really important. I don't want this stuff sticking out because it's going to hang up and rip these off. So I want to cut these at kind of a bevel and go all the way around like so and I only need the cork on one end but just like that hole in the middle okay we got our aviation nut on there we got our first wing nut on there we're going to take a fender washer we're going to slip it on there we're going to take a rubber washer we're going to slip it on there we're going to take one of the sp spools and look at this. I'm going to put it in this way first and make sure we get any of the loose cork that's coming off there. And then we're going to put it where it's towards the middle. I'm going to take the other one. We're going to do the same thing, except we don't have to turn this one around. So notice that washer, wing nut, washer, rubber washer, bare end of wood, cork end of wood, cork end of wood, spool, rubber washer, fender washer, and wing nut. I'm not going to waste your time having you watch me put this wing nut all the way down like so. But I'm going to spin it down a little bit like that and then I'm going to take this thread protector and put it right on the end like that. So I don't have any jagged ends and this is ready to adjust just like so and to clamp on a guitar. All right, in no time, six of these are done. They are in a Folgers can and I'll tell you what, Mrs. Olson is sure happy about that. All right, it is warm in our shop. Uh, we've got the area masked off. Uh, we have our suction cups of different sizes and our hide glue soaking in hot water over here. Uh, so we are good to go. We also have some of these fine sanding pads that come in different grits. I will give you a link to those below down there. Check the resources section. And so what I'm going to do is just run over this. Of course, if there's anything sticking up, I want to get rid of that. And then we're just going to push some hide glue in there using either our glue bot, which is an awesome thing. You just put this up here. And you watch, if you squeeze it, the glue comes up there, you see that? And I can just put it on like so, and it runs in there, like so. Or I can use this fine line standard tip that I've got. Of course, it never works when I want it to, but it's got this little metal rod in here that keeps your tip clean, and I can use that if I need to here. We're not going to watch that, but I'm going to push 
this glue in by dipping this here. I've put that glue there. You see that? Now I've told you about this. You want to start at the edge. You don't want to push down and pull up because it will suck the glue out. But you just start at the edge and you push the glue in as you go very easily like that. All right, one more dip of hot water. We'll start the sponge way over here and follow the curvature of the body there. And there we go. Again, important thing is don't pull up and suck the glue back out. Now we're just going to take this warm water and get any excess glue off of there. While you got this water here, it's a good time to throw the tips of your fine line applicator in there and make sure that nothing is clogged up. So, oh yeah, if I didn't tell you, I will give you a link to that below too, as along with the suction cups. Those are handy. So now we're going to use our clamps. All right, so the glue is in. It's wiped off okay. I'm going to go down here just past where the crack ends right there. And I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit. I've got my hot water handy and some paper towels handy. I'm going to squeeze this just a tad until I start to see glue coming out right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and evenly space these out. Now it's pretty handy to have a set of these if you're gluing um, guitar bodies like you're repairing tops and taking backs off and doing things like that. If you start doing that, there's a couple places on the internet where you can buy these. But yeah, now I can watch as I'm tightening this up right here. There's starting to be a little glue squeeze out. So I take a paper towel and some hot water. And I want to get that as it comes out. Because if I don't, once this is all dried up, then i got to come back and and sand it down. I really don't want to do any more than, of that than I have to. It's also a good idea to have your clamps set at the right height before you start. But you see that that cork on both ends is protecting everything and you might be able to see the glue oozing out right. Okay, we are on the last one here and I zoomed in a little bit. There is the end of the crack right there, and that's where it comes up to the body. I'm going to put this last clamp. I'm going to come over here just a little bit so you can watch. If you watch right, right there while I'm squeezing this clamp, you can see the glue starting to come out right there. Okay, you see that? Now I'm going to go back. Let's zoom back out and mess up our lighting. The other zoom out. There we go. There's our six clamps we've made. And I'm going to go back now and make sure that they're just, this one loosened up all the way. Something's moving a little bit. Again, I don't want to fold these cracks in on themselves. So, there we go. Perfect. All right, guys, there it is. We got things warmed up in the shop, and we're going to let this dry overnight. I am really, really happy with the way this old Archcraft is coming along. Remember, it's almost 90 years old, and it was tore up from the floor up when we got it. I am happy about these spool clamps again. Um, they are available um, for purchase other places. I will give you a link down there in the resources section if you need those. You'll need a bunch if you plan on taking the top off or back off of a guitar. But um, yeah, we're going to let this dry up. And thanks for watching. Give me a like. I hope you like the way the channel's going because um, Pops and Fresh seems to be pretty happy. Hey, I'll see you next time.